So how much do you network with other house groups, Wet'suwet'en clans, other indigenous peoples or so-called First Nations or First Nations in so-called Canada and so-called North America in general and perhaps even other indigenous communities around the world? I don't know. Um, and also, are you in touch with anti-fracking activists in Dawson's Creek? Um, and how much are you in touch with Eunice Stoughton camp on the west side of the Wet'suwet'en territory? Um, so, yeah, just basically what links are important to you? I mean, again, maybe this isn't, isn't something you want to be particularly public. And if that's true, then we can just skip it. But... Um, um, I think, think that our, I think that our relationships with other Indigenous nations are really important, and certainly our relationships within our nation. Um, like Frida is part of my father clan, and so we're related. And um, I'm like my grandfather was Unistoten, so I think that like our relationships are really critical to like our survival as a nation. Um, and I think the same is true with our relationships with other people that are, um, facing similar things, because like I said before, like the state is never going to just do the right thing and it's going to take all of us coming together and asserting our sovereignty, um, in a unified way that is really going to make the difference. Um, because a win for one of us is a win for all of us. Like we're all connected in that way. So yeah, I think the relationships are really important. Great, great, great. Okay. And I won't speak to um, individual <laughs> relationships. But... No, no. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so building on that, how can people in other countries a long way away, like here in the UK, although I'll be in Canada soon, but yeah, how can people in the UK support you um, and support the fight of the Wet'suwet'en against the ecocidal coastal gas link pipeline um including for those who are able to donate do you have a publicized bank account or paypal address or something like that uh, yeah we do for sure have um uh different ways to donate so um uh paypal email transfer if folks want to write us a check um but we also have like a, a fundraising platform and that link is all available on our donate page on our website. Um, right. And then if folks are interested in learning about other front lines, we also have other uh, front lines to donate to if you're feeling a little extra generous. Um, yeah. And then as far as taking action, um, I think the more unified um actions are, whether they're in so-called BC or so-called Canada or globally, internationally, like, um, you know, there's different uh, campaigns. I, I loathe to call them campaigns, um, but I guess that's what they're called. Um, <laughs> like yeah. we don't, con we don't consider our fight for sovereignty a campaign. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? But there's, yeah, sure. But there's different um, there's different coordinated actions that are available for people to take that you don't have to be like on the ground. Um, but there are um, different solidarity groups that take different actions all around the world. So I believe there's like a UK with to it in solidarity group um, that in we were actually going to go. Oh, funny story. So at the beginning of 2020, um, the solidarity group in the UK, like did a huge, uh, petition against, uh, one of the investors of the coastal gas link pipeline, because they have a head office somewhere. I can't remember details London, don't. Yeah, probably. And, um, and so they did this huge campaign and got all of these signatures. Um, and then the hereditary chiefs were going to fly out there and deliver it with them. Oh. Um, but then 
like literally our flights, we were going to fly out um, at the end of March in 2020. <laughs> okay. And then I was like, before we booked the flights, I'm like, you know what? Maybe, maybe we should like just see what happens with this COVID thing first before we book the flights. And they're like, yeah, okay, good call. And then the pandemic, global pandemic was declared. And I'm like, oh my God, imagine if me and all the chiefs were like stuck in the UK for this lockdown, this two week lockdown. And then flights started getting, it would have been insane. Um, At any rate, there's definitely, I think those networks exist that people could tap into um or uh we certainly encourage folks to like organize amongst themselves um we don't I know that people really want to know like what we want them to do and I think that like legally we're never going to direct anyone to do any kind of action yeah (laughs) um but I think that you know, we welcome and appreciate all actions. A broad spectrum of actions, you could say. Yeah, yeah. like there's there's examples on our website um, linked under, I think, physical something or other um, on the take action page. So there's a take action page on our website. Uh, currently at the top is like, there's a bunch of different RBC campaigns because the Royal Bank of Canada is like the top investor in yeah. um, oil and gas industry. And so there's a lot of different examples. And then there's, I think, examples of like previous actions that people have taken that, you know, could be like good inspiration or whatever if folks are really lost for ideas. But there's tons of things um, listed uh, focusing on like contractors. Um, because there are companies that are contracted through CGL to do the work that are not from North America, you know, um, they're from like the UK and Europe and different places over there. So, um, those are definitely like options, um, like the, uh, oh shoot, their name was just on the tip of my tongue. But like the welding company, for example, is like uh i think contracted from a place in italy okay so there's definitely like a lot of options for folks to take like donating financially is great spreading awareness like this is great um and then if people want to um choose a specific target like if you're into the you know um divestment campaigning um or, you know, contractors or investors, like those kinds of things. It's really, yeah, there's a broad spectrum. Campaign letter writing to politicians and yeah, all kinds I of mean, things. I guess, I guess like a lot of the people I know are into sort of more sort of spicy actions, but um oh, we I like that- spice. Yeah, that's good. I, I know you I know you can't, as you just said, you can't actually recommend anything that's illegal, but um yeah i guess one person asked me that i guess they were worried they were worried that something might reflect badly on the wet certain if they did it or whatever but as but as long as it's not violent towards human beings um mm-hmm. i guess it's up it's up to them and um, yeah um i think that everybody as an autonomous human being has the right to express um their thoughts and their feelings towards uh, the genocide against Wet'suwet'en people by forcing an extractive project through our territories against our consent. Um, I know those sorts of things piss me off. And so, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I would feel like a kinship with other yeah. folks that are pissed off about it. Um, so, yeah, I think that everyone has... Uh, Everyone's a grown up that we're talking about here, right? So yeah, um, it's clear. Yeah. I think it's 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 pretty clear. 
Thanks. Um, okay. Are there any actions or events coming up regarding the CGL resistance or regarding the attempts of the RCMP and the illegal colonial deathly destructive project? Um, is there anything coming up that people need to be aware of? Is there sort of any kind of deadline for anything or or are they gonna are they gonna try and start doing anything at any particular point soon? There will be a call to action and we're asking that uh, coordinated and uh, synced actions start taking place on November sixth. Um, as a start of solidarity actions in support of our fight against the drilling um, underneath Wadzinkwa. How did you come to be making the Yinta documentary? Because I would love to make a documentary myself one, one day. So I wonder if you have any tips for how that's coming together? Uh, I, have zero, I have zero yeah. <laughs> experience making okay. a documentary. Um, there has been um, a few folks that have been out on the territory filming for like the last 10 years. Um, and wow. I just, yeah. So it's a lot of footage. <laughs> wow. I don't know how we're going to get it down to a feature length. Um, uh, the Canadian broadcast company is our broadcaster. And so they, um, we're making a one hour TV version for them. And then the feature length version would be available on their um, streaming platform. Um, but we're still looking for international distributors. Um, and so I, I joined the team a couple of years ago. Uh, it's really kind of a different um, process for uh, the project than um, probably any other kind of, I, I hope not too different from like any other uh, documentary film that has been made about or with an Indigenous community. But there's um, a representative from Gidim Den, which is myself. Um, so I'm co-directing and co-producing um, and then there's uh, Brenda, who is Unistoten, who's co-directing and co-producing. And it just so happened that I am Slato's sister, who is the spokesperson for Get Him Done Checkpoint. And Brenda is Frida's sister, who's the spokesperson for Unistoten. We didn't plan oh, wow. it that way, um, hmm. but that's just kind of how it worked out. It's kind of interesting. Um, and then Michael Toledano is our other co-director and he's also like director of photography. So he's been, um, he's the person who's like taken the majority of the footage over the last 10 years. Um, he's was living out at Unistoda and uh, healing center um. for quite some time and lives in the territory now. And um, so I think I just came into it like organically through yeah. my role as the media coordinator with Get Him Done Checkpoint. But this is definitely um, my first documentary film, my first film experience. Uh, we went to the Cannes Film Festival in May um, wow. and we submitted a 10 minute um, clip of our rough cut, uh, to the docs in progress category, and we won an award. So that oh. was exciting. Um, made a bunch of connections over there and, um, Gosh. Yeah, it was wild. Everyone's yeah. like, Oh, da, 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 da. I've made like this many films and blah, blah, blah. And I'm working on yeah. this and this and this and this project. And I'm <laughs> like, this is my first thing ever. I don't know what I'm doing. Help. <laughs> Are you finding um, it people... exciting though? Like learning the skills and stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. learning the industry is um, exciting and frustrating because I think that the film industry really um, has a lot to learn in working with indigenous communities um, and certainly um, how 
<clears throat> how communities are involved um, needs a lot of work. Like even, so with our project, we are um, at every step in the process involving our house groups. And so we involve Cassia, we involve Unistoden and um, have meetings with them and show them the footage that we're working on and the sequences and the different scenes that we want to include. And they give direction on that. Um, and I don't think that that is generally how things work. Like usually people will come in, they'll take footage and then they'll show them the finished product. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so it's really different. Um, it's taking a lot more time mm, than yeah. people are used to. Um, mm. And so it's taken a lot of work with um, our, th like the organizations that we have contracts with, like CBC, mm. for example, you know, we've had to push our deadline a couple of times because mm. it just takes so long to get the house group together and then to get them to watch the footage and then give feedback and like give mm. direction. So um, it's a really different way of making a film. So I don't know if I necessarily, I think it works that I don't have any experience in the right, industry right, right. Yeah, because yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, oh, well, this is how, like, we're following a Witsuit decision-making process model oh, that's to make amazing. the film. That's and so, so and that, wow. that, that I think, you know, if I'm like, oh, no, 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 like, we need to follow this deadline and we need to have this and this and this and blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Like, I don't even know what all the whatever, whatevers are. You know what mm. I mean? We're just like doing it our way. And I think that really works for this project. Um, and hopefully yeah. um, other projects will follow suit because yeah. um, it really should come from the community. Like, this is Unistoden and Cassia. And the Witsuit Inn as a whole, like it's their story. Um, it's our story. I have a hard time with ours because we also have a rule or a law within Witsuit Inn that um, translates to you don't stir another clan soup. So you'll never hear me speak on behalf of Unistoden and you'll never hear Unistoden speak on behalf of Gidim Den, right? And so it's wow. like... Even within our decision-making process, like another house group can't tell another house group what to do, you know? So yeah. anyway, so we as a nation, like I would never speak on like my entire nation, you know no, what I mean? No. Like I'm not, yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway, so. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. That, that's, that's, um, that's really inspiring, uh, inspiring my way to make a documentary. When do you think it might be kind of ready? Uh, I think, um, I don't remember when our last uh, revision said, sometime next year. So it was supposed yeah. to be, it was supposed to be early next year, <laughs> but maybe like hmm. spring time, sure. time, we would be okay. like touring it. Great, great, fantastic. Okay, um, okay. So in the UK, HS two High Speed Two is a high speed rail project which has been proven to be ecologically disastrous, economically unviable. Since there has been a lot of resistance, some sections of the project have been cancelled, but the main portion is still pushing forward. Um, what message would you give to the woodland defenders who are camp camped along the route trying to stop? this project um they have also faced violent security men police on a regular basis and they are sometimes caused injuries when they are cut out of trees um i think that i would give them the same message that has been given to us uh one of the loudest messages that we received all throughout the summer um, visiting other nations was to never give up um, because the state and industry are never going to stop ever. We visited one community called Amjanong and they are completely overrun by oil refineries. Um, 
I spent the entire day crying. <laughs> um, and they're never going to stop. They're never going to stop until all the trees are gone, until all the minerals are out of the earth, until all the oil and fracked gas is out of the earth and they will never stop until there's not a single dollar left to make. Um, mm. So never give up. Great. We have to great. be just as tenacious as they are. Great. Thank you. That's a great answer. Um, okay. Last, last few questions. What kind of parrot, what kind of poetry do you like to write? Um, I like to write poetry with swear words in them. Oh, good. And <laughs> well, yeah, cool. um, I think uh, it's funny <laughs> because I thought that, um, or I didn't think that all of my poetry was political. And then I like posted uh, one of my love poems one day and my friend was like, uh, dude, yeah, that's political. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, okay. So my idea actually for um, my podcast is going to be called Poetry and Politics. And right. so I'm going to read a poem, uh, discuss the political contents of that poem with a guest, um, and then... Um, read the poem again right. um so i have everything all set up i even have an instagram page and a website because i was wow. like so ambitious at one point <clears throat> last year or the year before i can't remember <laughs> i'm like i'm gonna do a podcast in all my spare time i have zero That's fantastic. Spare time. But, um, I'll link to that. Yeah. I'll link to that underneath the video as well. So the website is live, is it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. So the podcast will be on which uh, platforms? Will it be on YouTube or what? What will it be? Um, I think because I haven't made one yet. So there's yeah. this one um, program that allegedly like um post to like all the platforms um oh. okay can't remember the name of it right now for the life of me but um anyway that's the plan that sounds but good it yeah. would, but then of course it would be linked like through the website and um my instagram page right so, so when when's that on the cards to when's that gonna start do you think Oh my God, I better do it soon. I've been talking about it lately and people are going to start to think that I'm some kind of flake. Um, I've just been so busy. And the people that I want to interview and like have on the show are also crazy busy. Like I want the first episode um, to be, uh, I already have like the whole first year planned out. <laughs> um, I'm really good at, planning things yeah. um so the first episode is going to be uh the love poem that i wrote for wudzinkwa called ingasai wudzinkwa um, oh. which means i love you and um and then my guest would be my sister is Leto, and we would talk about uh how much we love wudzinkwa and why we're doing what we're doing so right yeah well, i really look I'm forward to i'm a little that. ambitious <laughs> Yeah, no, I really look forward to it. Um, so, yeah, um, are you are you personally an anti-capitalist? Uh, I, I would say, yeah. I have a hard time. I was talking to somebody the other day about, like, the human rights violations against the Wet'suwet'en, and, and um, they were like, so you haven't? really like specifically said those words like human rights violations and I think that my identity around being with Suedin um just like encompasses so much of those like there's so much overlap that yeah. I just like include it in that you know what I mean and so mm. um within our system um like the house chief is should be like the poorest person within our house. 
um, because they are the ones responsible mm-hmm. for ensuring that all of our house members have what they need. And if they don't, then they're responsible for like them getting it. And so traditionally that would look like going out hunting and making sure everyone had enough meat and those kinds of things. Mm. Um, Or like moving a family to a different territory that we're responsible for because there's like over harvesting or whatever, whatever, like there was like a responsibility of the house chief to do that. And so I think that that was part of why there was a ban on potlatches because they saw it as like they, the state saw it as like wasteful and we're like giving away everything that we own. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. To make sure that the wealth is distributed and they don't, they wanted the opposite, right? Like they wanted everyone to, to um, pursue wealth and, Instead, we were just like giving it all away and they couldn't understand that. And so, hmm. yeah, yeah, that I makes think, sense. Yeah. And so it's like inclusive of my identity as a Wet'suwet'en person. I also don't identify as a, a feminist and don't tell the feminists because they might get really mad at me. Um, but we're a matrilineal and matriarchal society. And so it's, the women that are the caretakers of the, of the territory. And it's, that's the responsibilities as well as like the rights and title passes through our female line. And so it's the matriarchs of our house groups that are, you know, the ones that are making the decisions. And then it's our house chief. That is the one that's like announcing they're like the speaker for the house group. Um, So Again, it's just, it's just really like inclusive of my identity as a Wet'suwet'en person. So okay. um, that's, yeah, that's really interesting because a lot of these terms like feminist, anti-capitalist, anti-statist, anarchist, they are kind of, you can see them as, I mean, I, I kind of identify as all of those things, but at the same time, if I'm talking to you, I can see how those terms are potentially sort of colonialist terms mm. as, as well, aren't they? If, if, if somebody just comes along to the wet Sowerton and says, oh, you have to be feminist or you should be anarchist or <laughs> whatever. Um, all the things. I should be all the things. And yeah, I kind all of am. But... Yeah. Mm-hmm. You are, but well, you don't need like... to have the labels. Yeah. Oh, God, I hate labels. I really do. Um And it's interesting because like my son did this project in school when he was in like grade four or five, I think. And it was, you had to like make up your own country. And so like he did his on the Wet'suwet'en, which is super cute. Um, And so in one of his descriptions, he was talking about how there was no gendered roles within Wet'suwet'en community. And so it was like, if you were really good at like making baskets, then you would like be a basket weaver. And it didn't matter if you were like what genitalia you had. Um, And so he like got into an argument with his teacher because his teacher like didn't believe that, like believed like there had to be gendered roles within Wet'suwet'en culture. And so um, we actually have a Wet'suwet'en history book. And so Samson like referenced the history book um, to like prove his point. Um, but yeah, I think it's really, it's, it's, uh, I think a lot harder for folks that aren't connected with like their culture and traditions of who their, um, traditional like leaders would be or their society, um, how it functioned and, those sorts of things, like um, people that have been colonized for a lot longer than us. Um, And so we've had to come up with these terms and definitions of them in order to uh, assert our beliefs Mm. and values. So I get it. And (laughs) I personally don't identify as any of those things. Like it's all but I don't think it's bad that other people do. Okay. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, that, that was so special. Thank you. And, and yeah, about the gender, gendered roles and stuff. That's a really amazing. Um, I'd love to learn more about the Wet'suwet'en. Um, I, in fact, I will. I will learn more online and so on, and hopefully by talking to some more people as well. Um, so, have you got any final thoughts before we sign off? Hmm. I don't think so.